Hey guys, it's Terrence Nan. You're listening to Hear the Spear presented by No Game Day. Go Dolls. Hey, what's up? This is Peter Ward, aka E Dub, in the house. So we're listening to Hear the Spear presented by No Game Day. Go live, go Nose. Hi, this is Charlie Ward, and you're listening to Hear the Spear, Go Nose. This is Terrell Fuckley. You're listening to Hear the Spear presented by No Game Day. No bloody. But perhaps better known as the greatest corner to ever step on a football field, Deion Primetime Sanders. The great Deion Sanders, my brother. What's going on, man? I could, I could wake up to that greedy every day, man. That was awesome. Hello, those fans. This is former Seminole Derek Brooks, and you're listening to Hear the Spear, presented to you by No Game Day. James Wilder Jr. What's going on, James? Thanks for having me on. SSOD, for the play to die, and go no. William Barnon Floyd. Gentlemen, what's up? What's happening, guys? This is Logan from Here the Sphere, presented to you by Noel Game Day. We are here for a live reaction. We thought our last episode was going to be the last of 2019, but nope. Marvin Wilson and Tamara Terry said that ain't going to happen. <laughs> We're back. It's just going to be me and our lead writer and editor, Dustin Lewis, with us tonight. Just giving our quick reaction to two stars on both sides of the field. Your two probably best players heading into next season on both sides of the field announcing they're making their return in the 2020 season to be coached by Norvell and company. What's going on, Dustin? Hey, what's going on? Yeah, definitely didn't expect to be back on the podcast before we got to 2020. Like I told you, Logan, I, I really didn't want to hear your voice again this year. I was hoping for a couple of days off because you get a little <laughs> annoying. But here we are. I mean, Tamari on Terry and Marvin Wilson wanted us to reunite. And honestly, I did not expect to wake up to uh, this news this morning. It's been a crazy couple of days. And, uh, you know, there was that tweet from Kenny D- Dillingham a couple of days ago saying one last Christmas present. And the next day, Florida State got transfer running back to Sean Corbin from Texas A&M and also grad transfer offensive tackle Devontae Taylor from FIU, who just buried Miami a couple of weeks ago. And then the very next day, Marvin Wilson and – Tamori on Terry are coming back to Tallah- Tallahassee. I mean, it's it's really just unbelievable the the good vibes that are just running through this program right now. Everything seems to be going the the right way since Mike Norvell has been hired. It's just been 23 days. I mean, it, it's just kind of insane. Mm-hmm. It's working a lot quicker, and uh, there's a lot of emphasis on getting guys that you need to fill the depth chart, and that was right off the bat with bringing in like you said, the running back and a offensive tackle and being able to do that so quickly and also make for a need of bringing in quarterbacks that uh, Mike Norvell did and was able to uh, get guys in quickly and immediately and yeah. even flip a guy from Louisville. I mean, that's huge and he's a very talented quarterback. Both of them are. Uh, one just has a star rating above him, but Tate Red Maedeker played against very good competition in Georgia and Valdosta. And Chubba Purdy, as we know, is, is a talented guy that also played against uh, good competition and, and is a very well-respected guy for, from 247 Sports. But for today, though, alone, you know, it just still goes to Mike Norvell, too, with bringing back to Marion Terry and Mike, uh, Marvin Wilson. Marvin Wilson is probably the biggest shock to me because before the season – Nobody, no fan expected that this would happen. No one would expect that Marvin Wilson would be playing another down in 2020 in Tallahassee or even tomorrow on Terry. Uh, but for this to happen, Mike Norville and company, I think, uh, I do think Dillingham and also Adam Fuller, I already know how Odell Higgins and, and relationship with Marvin Wilson. I know that's tight, but being able to sit there and talk offensively with Tamarion Terry and Mike Norvell and Dillingham, Dilly Dilly, uh, to convince <laughs> them, you know, to convince T- Terry to stay is huge. They need it on offense. You're losing Cam Akers uh, and, you know, you bring back a wide receiver corp next hey, season. Hey, 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 let me interject huge. there. Maybe not. Maybe you're not losing Cam Akers. I don't want to. I don't want to get a rumor started or anything. But <laughs> Cam Akers replied to to Morion Terry's um, Instagram post about return to Florida State. I don't know what the the freaking emoji is where like the two arms are like grabbing each other. Let but me see. It was it was that, and then he said, "Let's do it." Let's see what we got I, here. I swear it, it was <laughs> it was on Tamorion Terry's Instagram comments. 
Let's see what we got here. Let's just since you know Dustin isn't you know he he just he's good with his writing. Let me go do my social media thing here and see what he's emphasizing here. Please. Let's see. Let's see if Cam. Let's see. I guess I got to load the comments. Yeah, Tamorian Tori Tamorian Terry's Instagram comments on his latest post. Yeah, his post about returning to Florida State. Okay. Uh, I guess I got to get through like 250 comments here. Yeah, um, but just talk about fast. while I'm looking for this, talk about Tamarion Terry and the impact this is going to make coming into next season for you know the quarterback situation too, but having a threat there. Yeah, I mean, really, this is this is Florida State getting back one of their their top two offensive players. Cam Makers obviously is is the best player on Florida State Florida State's offense, but Tamarion Terry just creates a different kind of threat. On the outside, I mean, we really saw what he could do in 2018 when he was still kind of developing. But this year, he took steps forward as a route runner and ended up with over a thousand receiving yards. He scored eight touchdowns, even despite the the inconsistencies at quarterback with James Blackman and Alex Hornibrook, Alex Hornibrook switching back and forth. And also, uh, another thing that I've been hearing is Treshawn Harrison is potentially going to be pulling his name out of the transfer portal and, and returning as well. So this is now a potential, this is a very good receiving core going into 2020. You've got senior DJ Matthews. You've got Tamori on Terry, Ontario Wilson, Keyshawn Heldon, who went down with a season ending injury against Clemson. Uh, Wilson hasn't played since being hurt against Wake Forest. And then you also have the young guys, Jordan Young and Warren Thompson, who's expected back. You add Harrison to that group, and then now there's some there's some other stuff going around on Twitter that, um, Jesus, Demarcus Adams. Sorry, couldn't could not remember his name for a second because I didn't have it written down here. But Demarcus Adams could also be coming back, former four star receiver who put his name to the transfer portal during the season. So, <laughs> Florida State's receiving core next year. You also add Brian Robinson, Ja'Kai Douglas. Kentron Porter in the early signing period. You still have Malachi Weidman committed, who has said he plans to sign with FSU in February. Not really too many question marks there. So this, this group yeah. of receivers is now extremely talented going into 2020. I mean, it's it's hard to put into words just how much talent Florida State now, now has on the outside. And you got to give a lot of credit to Ron Dugans here for sure. Mm-hmm, most certainly. I was looking at the comment here that Cam Akers put on Tamara and Terry's post about him announcing the video, and he put a handshake emoji, and uh, he said, uh, let's see here, uh, he said, let's get to work, or, oh no, he said, let's go, and he put the handshake emoji. Yeah, yeah, um, see, I, I, uh, I don't know what it means, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't expect that to happen, he's declared... But you never know with this what's going on right now. I like I said, I never expected it from Marvin Wilson. I did say on here though multiple times on the podcast, saying you know it's just I'm just curious why he hasn't announced yet. Maybe it's just because he's helping out pretty much coaching with Odell Hagens in the defensive line. Uh, we haven't heard anything about him making an announcement. I thought his would even be before Cam Akers. I thought it was just very odd uh, that it hadn't came out yet. Uh, so uh, it'll be interesting to see what and I'm. And I told myself I wouldn't say it interesting anymore, so i got to find another word. But it's not 2020 yet. It's not 2020. But it's it's going to be fun to see these two back. And Marvin Wilson, you know, one thing that I am excited about is that, you know, we're also expecting Corey Durden to return. So you're looking at the mob making a return back again. You know, oh, yeah. Wilson and Robert Cooper and Durden, they also they commented and said, we're call, we call it the mob. And these three big boys will return for a second season together. Uh, Marvin Wilson, Robert Cooper – Mar- and uh, Corey Durden will be a, a, a nasty threat to offense, offensive lines heading into next season. Well, let's talk about it because, I mean, this the, the starting front of this defensive line and also the depth behind it, there were some question marks going into the early signing period. But now with Durden returning and Marvin Wilson also returning, some of those questions have been answered. I mean, you have uh, Adam Fuller is going to run more of a 4-3 defense. So you have Janarius Robinson and uh, Joshua Kando, who's also expected to return on the defensive ends. And then you have Marvin Wilson, Corey Durden on the inside. Behind them, you have Robert Cooper, 
Cedric Wood, who looked pretty good as a backup this year. The guy you love, Logan, Dennis Briggs, Mm -hmm. True Thompson, who got some time. Malcolm Ray, who we've heard really good things about coming into Florida State. Yeah. And then there's still some other guys who redshirted this year. Derek McClendon, Curtis Fan, and Kashawn Fuller, who could all take steps forward during the offseason and become contributors. So the defensive line and the wide receiving core just got a, a whole lot better today. And um, just un, unimagin- unimaginably good news for, for Florida State. And credit to Mike Norvell and his new staff coming in. They, they've already met with every player on the roster, so you can tell that they must have really made an impact on Marvin Wilson to get him to come back from potentially being drafted in the first round. And also Tamori on Terry, whose athleticism at the combine could have made him a, a top a top three a top three round pick in, in my opinion. So to get those to get those guys back is huge. And I think another thing you have to think about is Norvell bringing back Odell. And also Ron Dugans, because that uh, that had to be a big impact mm-hmm. in, in their decision to come back with him keeping their respective position coaches. Yeah, it seems like Mike Norvell is, well, it doesn't seem, he is making <laughs> smart, smart decisions. Obviously, bringing back Ron Dugans, I think a lot of fans were really excited about that. Higher, I guess you can say, but retaining him. And, of course, Odell Hagans. I mean, Florida State fans love them some Odell Hagans. And, I mean, they he deserves the love, obviously for the work that he's done and how he re- represents Florida State. But this played a vital role under Mike Norvell, too. I think it's time to start giving some big, mad respect for what he's doing. He's going after guys immediately. He came in with a plan. It's pretty obvious now that this had been going on for a while. Uh, he was doing things while at Memphis that was getting him prepared for Florida State to make an impact and be able to talk with recruits and, and get them here and, and visit Florida State quarterbacks to come visit Florida State and just pretty much fall in love with it immediately because I mean it's rarely you get quarterbacks that way but also you bring in this Florida State landed two five stars today in a span of 20 minutes (laughs) Uh, and I am ecstatic for what Mike Norvell will do next I think it's good to speculate now maybe some other players I'm I'm Ham Hamsa Nasraldine is one that I would be interested to see if he would stay too that is probably your second best defensive player I mean you could argue he could be your top defensive player from the season uh he was absolutely spectacular he was last year but I mean he started getting a lot more national attention at the end of the season his name was talked about continuously on the air while uh it was being uh on the SEC network uh talking about how he just flies all over the field and makes about every tackle you can think of and between before the first half or so he's already racking up double digits uh tackle <laughs> tackle stats which is he, he's just an incredible and i would i would be interested to see he went down with an apparent knee, uh, leg injury we heard it was something to do with his knee and he's got to figure out now if he wants to stay in tallahassee and work under tj rushing and, and chris marv and adam fuller and his position groups if if this will fit well for him because Florida State would really love it. It'll be icing on the cake with a cherry on top to have both Marvin Wilson and Hamza Nasraldine, and you're bringing back Jaden Wood, Jaden Lars would be Asante Samuel Jr., Akeem Den, hopefully Travis J. That defense, I think fans, Corey Durden, Robert Cooper too, who's only getting better every season. Uh, and you bring a generous Robinson, Joshua Kando. This defense could be absolutely stupid if all of them return healthy enough. Uh, and I, I don't know if I'm missing any names, but it, it could be could get really silly in Tallahassee. <laughs> Mari Gaynor. I mean, yeah. you've got you've got the guys coming in. Demory Tate. Uh, plenty plenty of good guys coming in on the defensive side of the ball in Tribe Twenty and. Mike Norvell is still trying to add to that by the time it's all said and done in in February. So, yeah, like you said, (laughs) with with a new defensive coordinator in place, um, a a real focus on the defensive side of the ball with this staff having five on-field assistants dedicated to defense, I think there's a a really good potential for the Seminoles to have a resurgence on on that side of the ball because, I mean, Florida State – from from when it was a national power and winning national championships and to what it what it has become now, Florida State's been about hard hitting defenses that shut down opposing teams, forced turnovers, 
and keep the offense in, in favorable position. And that just hasn't happened in the last couple of years. So that's something that's definitely got to change. And Mike Norvell is looking like he's going right at it, along with the offensive line. I mean, he's done a great job at hitting all of Florida State's needs so far. Mm-hmm, exactly. Defense in Tallahassee is a big, not only for, you know, it's essential reasons, but also motivation and hype and bringing energy to team to the team as a whole on that sideline, big hits, making plays, interceptions, DBU, all that kind of energy plays a vital role in Florida State success. And it has been that way for a lot of years. It's been lacking, like Dustin Lewis said, and uh, you know, we could, <laughs> uh, it has been lacking quite a bit. And but hopefully, you know, with what a lot of these what, what's happening now is that, you know, we saw an effect with recruits saying they, they believe in Mike Norvell and they like what they see from him. But guys that he has just met that have been at Florida State for a long while, like Marvin Wilson, like Tamaron Terry, are on the same page as Norvell. And I do expect, I wouldn't be shocked if you see more players uh, that were maybe contemplating leaving Florida State or going to the NFL draft. I wouldn't be surprised or training for the NFL draft, I wouldn't be surprised if some make the change because whatever Mike Norvell is telling them in private meetings or at team meetings, it's working. And if it's anything like he had during the press conference, which he was talking where he switched his tone real quick uh, and got everybody's attention, it got me from typing (laughs) to actually look over at the screen. uh, And it kind of got chills from if he's doing that kind of stuff with family members and players in there talking to him, I feel like he could maybe, maybe, make me and Dustin put on pads and give us a try to go on board drills against Marvin Wilson. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, definitely his message so far has, has been well received by all parties the, from the media to the fan base to now we're seeing it with, with recruits and players. I mean, we talked about what he did with 10 days leading up to the early signing period and, and he's just continuing to impress. And I've had some people, uh, particularly Gator fans, which is kind of funny, tweeted me uh, throughout the day saying what Mike Norvell is is normal. Uh, he's done the same things Willie Taggart's done in 23 days. And uh, no, no, he hasn't. I mean, I don't know if people, <laughs> I don't know if people remember, but when Willie Taggart first came in, it took him a pretty long time to get his full staff in place. It took 56 days for him to hire an offensive coordinator. And uh, Tribe 18 fell apart. I mean, it was, I think it was around 12th whenever Taggart was getting the job and it fell down to 76 or something like that. And Taggart did rebuild the class, but I mean, that took two months. Mike Norvell came in, secured basically the entire class. A couple people that did decommit came right back. And he also added two quarterbacks and some other talented players to that list. And also with the, with the staff thing, I mean, some of the guys that Taggart brought in had strictly been with him at USF and Oregon. They they weren't really proven hires in the coaching ranks. And I think we're seeing the complete opposite with Norvell. Basically, every hire that Florida State has made, whether it be on-field assistance, which uh, Norvell's staff is now at 9 out of 10. I'm expecting the last one, David Johnson from Tennessee, to be announced on January 2nd or so after, after their bowl game. But – from the on-field assistants to the guys that are going to come in to be analysts off the field. He's hired two guys so far from FBS programs to be analysts that were assistant coaches. So they're taking a demotion to come be an analyst at Florida State under Norvell to the the street of the conditioning coach, um, the chief of staff, the, the transfers that he's already landed in this short time period. Taggart did nothing like this, and and it's kind of disrespectful for people to even, I don't know, try and compare the two's start at, at Florida State. It was wildly different. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Well, that will probably do it unless you have anything more to say about our instant reaction. I think we could ramble on for another hour like we <laughs> usually do, but we need to stop ourselves, and someone needs to say, that's it, cut it. <laughs> so. We need to end off 2019 and just hopefully say that's it. I'm sure maybe something else will break tonight and we'll be able to come on here again. Maybe that would be really fun. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Cam Akers announces he will be back. (laughs) Hey, we'll see. We'll see. I'm just, I'm just saying, follow, 
Follow the follows has been working. We might have to start following the comments. <laughs> if, that, if that's the case, we will have really no life whatsoever. What's, <laughs> we'll be looking on every social media, like you said, follow for follows, and then writing and podcasting. I really won't have anything else to do with my life. This might be it. But, um, <laughs> yeah, thank you guys so much again for listening with us on during this 2019 season. We really appreciate it. Thanks to the guests again that were listening or that came in and talked with us, like some big names. Uh, Terrell Buckley, Derek Brooks uh, came on and joined us. Um, who else am I missing? I'm missing some uh, other Knowles, but the guys, those Luke two guys. Routes, Carlos Williams. Yeah. Terrence yeah. Mann, Reggie Northrup. A lot I mean, of. Really, really just so many seminal greats, national champions, NFL players, NBA players, NBA assistant coaches. I mean, really just reaching all over the place to bring in guests and. I think we really did a great job job of that this year, and next year it's just going to keep getting keep getting bigger and better. So stay yep. tuned to to what we're doing over here on Hear the Spear. Yeah, we hosted three Super Bowl champions, six national champions, NFL Hall of Fame inductee, NFL or college football Hall of Fame inductee, and FSU Hall of Fame inductee. So yeah, three national th- uh, six national champions and three su- Super Bowl champions. We'll just leave it at that. That's what Hear the Spear brought this year. Thank you guys so much for listening. It means a lot to us. We're growing and listens. We really appreciate it. And you give a, give your time to give us a chance, too. We were always surprised by that. But, uh, yeah, if you're on iTunes, feel free to rate us five stars. It really does help a lot. Leave a review. Tell us what you like uh, so then other fans can come on and listen and see if they give it. Uh, will want to give it a try, too. And if you're on YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button so then you're, you'll – be notified of when the new episodes come out and you can hit that little bell and I think you'll get a notification to your phone. Um, and if you're on Twitter, make sure you're following us at here, the spear. That's where we tweet out every new episode also to remind you guys, but, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much, uh, for listening. Also, if you're on iTunes, hit that subscribe button. So then you'll also automatically have podcast episodes loaded to your phone. I think that'll do it. Thank you guys so much for listening in 2019. We will see you in 2020. Enjoy the game tomorrow.